This is a photo of a raccoon that died back in 1975, a picture that I found in an old crate. My uncle as a small child took this very photo for a reason he has since forgotten, but in doing so he managed to document the existence of this specific animal that would have otherwise been completely lost in the oblivion of countless forgotten lives, absent of any human record or conscious mind. This single and only photo is the only evidence of this raccoon's objective reality, and with it we can assume this raccoon most likely had offspring, ate animals and plants, and forevermore impacted the ecology around northern Maine where both this raccoon and I are from. But that's just it. We can only assume. This photo doesn't give much context to the observer over what kind of life this raccoon had, but it does give an account. This photograph is the only thing that kept this raccoon's existence from being completely forgotten, lost within time. But is that enough? Almost everything about this raccoon is completely unknown. Yes, this photograph does document the existence of this specific animal being real. Once you're done watching this video, are you going to remember it, though? Even with photographic and video accounts, will this raccoon just be forgotten once this video gets old? These are questions that I can't help but ponder about, but it makes it very clear that being forgotten is the reality of our existence. Even if you have a record, there will always be context you simply can't account for, ranging from the most influential individuals ever to the smallest remnants of something having actually existed like with this photo. Now I want to take a moment and look at you and I for an example. Some of us have had the opportunity to meet our great-grandparents and can make an account for who they were, but I want to look specifically at our great-grandparents' great-grandparents, or your great-great-great-great-grandparents. Do you know who all of them are? All 64 unique individuals who had their own complex lives that were necessary for you to exist. I'm sure many of you have a record on some of them by means of a name or even a picture, painting, or journal. And there may also be some that are completely lost. You can't find them and you have no idea who they are. I know for me, I can't find all 64. But there was one special one I did find. This is Lydia Legro. Born in 1806, she is one of my great 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 grandmothers. And I have absolutely no idea who she was, let alone the other 63 people. I can't say Lydia was presumably wealthy considering this photo was taken in the 1840s and she has nice attire. Beyond that, this photo doesn't give me much context into the person she was. Sure, she is just as real as my other great 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 grandparents, and I know if she didn't exist, nor would I. Out of the 64 unique individuals whose descendants would go on to make me, she is the only one I currently own a picture of. The rest of them are just names or unknown. That begs the question, at what point did my ancestors stop remembering, recording, and passing on information of their ancestors to their children? What about you? How many ancestors that far back do you know? If not the 6th generation, what about the 10th? I mean, a 10th generation back from you contains 1,024 unique individuals if there is no overlap. And the further back you go, the more you realize that it took a lot of people to make you and to make me. And if you have had or are planning on having children, you could eventually be part of a massive group of people who, like Lydia, could have been necessary to create somebody 200 or more years after you. But like Lydia, you may also be nothing more than a name or a face to your descendants of that day. Being somebody who is just occasionally looked up and thought about, but essentially forgotten. And that really freaks people out because it's nothing new and it's pretty much inevitable. If not 200 years from now, you can definitely count on it being a thousand years from now. And I will admit, I used to worry a lot about that myself. But while looking at all these old photos, I found myself realizing that having our life remembered is much less important than the impact we can make with our life, no matter what size or if we are personally remembered for it. This is another picture of one of my ancestors, and I have absolutely no idea what his name is. I have no context, he was just in a crate like the raccoon. He is a mystery. Nobody alive knows who he is, and due to that, he is just like the raccoon. Real, but forgotten. But like the raccoon, I know he lived a life that impacted the things and potentially the people around him. He ate food, clearly had a family, and bought clothes, unless I am a descendant of master clothes thieves. But even then, his life obviously would have impacted people around him. Now including, unintentionally, you. And you and I are doing the same thing, hopefully for the better. 
every interaction in our life can cause a domino and or butterfly effect. When our existence is no longer relevant to the people who will live long from now, the chain reactions that started with ourselves will always be timeless. For how you interact with something may impact something else that impacts something else that impacts something else. When it comes to our problems, our life, these photos, they are temporary. So as you live your life, don't feel insignificant. We may be small within this universe, but we are big when it comes to the things and people within our life. But how we treat people, this planet, our time, can cause a chain reaction that can transcend many lifetimes. So when most of us who are living today are forgotten, our actions, our impact, our legacy, our existence, will live on through the people that we are around and the people we will pass on this world to. I say if you can make this world at least a little bit better than when you came into it, even with all our human faults, you did something better than simply being remembered. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the video. My question for you guys is, what is the furthest back in your family tree you can trace every single individual back to? And with all that said and done, my name's Dale, this is ThinkFact, and remember, never stop learning and thinking in this case. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, feel free to check out some of my other content for the facts and thoughts that almost everybody missed. Have a good one.